Hi there and welcome to this video where I will test if the Tenkan-sen Kijun-sen crossover strategy can be profitable when trading with a bot. This is a follow up on my other two videos in the series about writing a crypto trading strategy. So let's find out if this particular strategy is profitable. If you have followed my channel recently, then you already know that I am busy with a video series about writing a crypto trading bot strategy. In those videos I explain the way I create a strategy with the help of data science tools like Python, Pandas and Jupyter Notebooks. Hopefully these will give you enough information to start your own journey in writing your own strategy for crypto trading. And in this video I will test if the Tenkan-sen Kijun-sen crossover strategy to see if it's actually profitable and how its performance is in comparison to other tested strategies. And as a special additional feature I also added the possibility to go short during bear trends. This was a much requested feature and with these videos I got the opportunity to make my own strategy that also can have short signals. However, it's not just a simple matter of creating signals for going short, but I also had to change a lot of other settings in my bot to make this simple feature work. First of all, I had to change the config file of the bot to make shorting possible. Luckily for us, the Fractrade site is an excellent source of information and there are clear instructions how to make the bot go short. In my case, I first had to change the config.json file on two lines. And to be precise, I had to change the trading mode from spot to futures on this line. And on the second line, I had to add the isolated option to margin mode. At this moment, these are the only two settings you can do in the bot. But in the future, there might be more modes. So we have to regularly check the Fractrate documentation for that. The next step I had to do is download futures data from Binance. It appears that the spot data lacks some additional information to make the bot go short, so I had to download that data as well. With this command I try to download the same time range as the usual spot market backtest data. But I only could download a shorter time range for backtesting futures. I guess that because of the relatively recent addition to trade with futures on Binance, the data range for backtesting is also smaller unfortunately. And because of that, the last thing I had to do is disable some pairs in my config file because simply there was no futures data for them. If I kept these enabled, then backtesting with futures and short signals simply did not work. So again I commented these out. Anyway, I ended up with a new futures directory in my Binance data directory with these files you can see on the screen here. And with all these additional requirements for my setup, I could finally backtest this Tenkan Kijun crossover strategy. This Tenkan Sen Kijun Sen crossover strategy is very simple but hopefully effective. The entry signals are as follows. The price should be above the Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen, and then there should be a crossover of the Tenkan Sen above the Kijun Sen. The exit signal is the price dropping below the Tenkan Sen, which also acts as a trading stop loss. And the entry signals to go short are the reverse of those long signals. The price should be below Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen, and there should be a bearish crossover of both of these indicators. And then the exit signal is when price crosses above the trailing stop loss Kijun Sen indicator. And because of the other videos I made, this time I will not go into the strategies code. If you want to know more about the code, then please watch those other videos. And you will see a link pop up in this video right about now. In that file I created a couple of functions that determine the direction of the trend, the position of the price in comparison to the Tenkan and Kijun Sen, and the exact signal to go short or long. So enough said about that. Let's just begin with the backtest section and see what the results are. 
But before I continue with the actual backtest results, I first have to give you some additional information on the backtest procedure I followed this time. Because first of all, I had to consider the different backtest time frame the futures data consists of. My normal backtest time frame is from 2017 to the end of 2021, but the time frame for futures data starts at 2019 because earlier data is not existent on Binance. And the second thing is that futures data and spot data might be different. That's because I specifically had to download futures data for backtesting. I also could not download all the pairs data because some pairs were not available. And I wanted to be complete, so I also wanted to test the normal Ichimoku settings and compare those with the settings advised for crypto trading. And finally I was curious to see if trading with long and short signals really is so much more profitable because you can trade in both directions. And also I wanted to be able to compare this strategy with all the earlier tested ones. So with all these different ideas, datasets, timeframes and settings, I decided to do multiple backtests with the same strategy. So I backtested with different Ichimoku settings, with different time ranges and also tested spot trading against futures trading. Just to be as rigid as I could be. But all this testing really took up a long time, so I'm not certain if I will do this with all these strategies in the future, but I'll guess we'll see by then. Anyway. Let's first test the futures dataset with the different settings to see what could theoretically be the best bot trading strategy for the future. And to begin with the default Ichimoku settings over the time period 2019 to 22, the one day time frame is the most profitable one with a win of 97% and a drawdown of 37%. The win rate is only 33%, so only 1 in 3 trades is profitable and your bot should have the nerves to let this trade also run to make up for the losing trades here. What I find remarkable is that going short with this swing trade strategy, it did not make a much more profit than usual. And comparing these results with the crypto market trading settings, then you can see that the results are getting slightly better, but not that much. I think that because these settings are slower, we have less trades overall, but still the win rate is about 30%, and even the profitability is less in this case. Maybe because I said these are slower settings, and they are not picking up shorter, long or short trends, and therefore not leveraging on chasing market conditions. However, you also have a lesser chance of losing money, so that's a good thing I guess. And if we compare these results side by side, then we can confirm that the longer crypto settings are much more prone to ride the trend longer and have a higher win rate than the shorter settings, but the tight stop loss settings of 10% takes its toll in both cases. So my first thought in optimizing this strategy is making the initial stop loss larger and make this trade breathe more, but that we'll see later. Because it also increases the risk of losing money when the market turns against you. But that's the trade off you should be willing to make. After I have backtested the futures dataset with long and short positions, I was now curious to see if spot data with only long positions gave better results or not. So what I did here was take only long signals with the same dataset of futures and over the same period. And what I found out was pretty surprising. Because spot trading on the same period as the futures trading earlier have resulted in much higher profits. So only going long in the same period would theoretically give me more profits than longing and shorting in the same time. And also the drawdown is lower and the win rate is higher than with shorting positions, which is pretty amazing. And finally also going long is much more applicable to different pairs. So all in all, you have a much better chance of gaining and keeping profits by only going long and not shorting at all. And this was also on the original Ichimoku time settings. So let's change this to crypto optimized to see what the results are then. And here also some surprising results. The profits are much more lower than expected. But then again, as I can see from the amount of trades and the corresponding win rate, these slower settings are not following the market close enough to jump in on every trading opportunity to make. 
It waits longer and therefore does not make many trades. But the trades the bot does are good because of the win rate and lesser drawdown. Nonetheless, considering the risk factors and the profits I want to make and keep according to my scoring system, this should be the strategy to follow if you compare all these different results so far. So again, going long only with these settings have the highest probability to make and keep money. Now for my final backtest I wanted to know if this TSKS crossover would perform better or worse than all the other tested strategies I did earlier. So this time I changed everything back to normal and let my machine run again to see the results. And sure enough, again I had another set of surprises. Because this time the original Ichimoku settings performed way better than the crypto settings I show you later. But these results do not lie. A profit of 529% is very nice for such a simple strategy like this. And also consider the drawdown of only 25%. And more than half of the tested crypto pairs respond well to this strategy. The win rate is still disappointing though, but I think that for swing trading strategies on this time frame, it's almost inevitable that you get some false signals. As long as you catch the major trends, it should end up fine. And if you consider the crypto optimized settings on this page, you see that the differences are not that great if you consider the win rate and applicability. Only the drawdown is lesser. But then again, you are not riding every opportunity with these settings, so the chances of having losing trades are also lower. Now I have only one thing to find out, and that is the hypothetical result if I would optimize this strategy parameters with a hyperopt function. So let's continue with that. As you can see, the Hyperop session again did its job and improved this strategy mainly on the ROI and stop loss settings. The stop loss setting went from 10% to 34%, and it made the price crossing down to 10 Sen the main reason for exiting trades. ROI became the main reason to exit trades with a win, and that's exactly according to the written down strategy in the Ichimoku book this all comes from. The final thing I want to say is a little bit of a critique, but also a familiar thing if you know these kinds of swing trade strategies, and that's the win rate. Because a win rate of below 40% is disappointing, and that's also mainly one of the reasons why this strategy scores worse than expected. And this proves again that you still have to trade with small amounts of money to catch each trade, because you never know which one is winning or losing. Anyway. With knowing this, let's see where the strategy ends in the overall strategy league. And that is on the 19th spot. From all these lower ending strategies, it has one of the lowest win rates, which also causes this one to score an extremely high risk of ruin. If you experience a losing streak, you can easily wind up with a trading account that's too small to make any more trades with the bot, and that's a reason for concern. The rest of these scores are moderate, and I think that using another indicator or method to confirm the real winning trades, or the losing ones, that can easily improve this strategy to make better trades. And one final thing I have to say, and that's actually the real conclusion of this video, is that I'm a little bit disappointing about the results of these short trades. I really expected to have better results by going long and short with a bot. And we have to do much more investigation to know the real cause of this. But in hindsight I can also imagine that there is a higher chance of having trades that can be stopped out in both directions. Which of course can be devastating in ranging markets, because they will draw your account empty before you'll know it. And because you have long and short trades, you can be stopped out in both directions with this. So as I said earlier. There should be a mechanism that has to improve this decision making of the strategy and only enter the right long and short trades. But then again, that's the whole thing about trading. You never know which trades will be profitable and which not. So with these findings I am at the end of this video. I hope you found some valuable insight and can use this in your own bot trading strategy. If you like these videos, then please click on the like button. And if you want to see more of these videos, then subscribe to my channel, I upload these regularly. 
also leave a comment if you have any idea why this shorting has such surprising results. I'm very curious about your opinion. And for now, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.